Hello everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely mimics the average amount of time you'll want to be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. After the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as a treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. All right, how do you think you did? Let's go ahead and examine the rhythm and see if we can identify it. First thing I'm looking at here is the rate. Now I'm counting six QRS complexes, so this is going at 60 beats per minute. The next thing that's jumping out at me are these gaps. It definitely breaks up the pattern of this overall rhythm, and this should definitely clue you in that there's something amiss. If I look right before these gaps, I'm able to see small P waves, and even one here. Because I'm seeing P waves and an absent QRS complex, I know right away that this is going to be a second degree heart block. To tell the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 second degree heart block, we'll look at the PR interval. Now in this particular strip, the PR interval is actually very, very consistent. There's no changes here at all. It doesn't get longer and longer before it drops off. So because I have a consistent PR interval, a drop off in QRS with a P wave in front of it, my diagnosis here is going to be a second degree type 2 or a Mobitz 2 heart block. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario next and determine whether or not it's stable or unstable. So we're dispatched to an office building for a 61 year old male who suffered an apparent sinkable episode. Patients complaining of dizziness and chest discomfort that comes and goes. The scenario then goes on to say that he had a recent heart attack. So this should be concerning for me as a potential cause of this dysrhythmia. As he continues speaking, he becomes unresponsive and slumps to the floor. Vital signs are as follows. Blood pressure is 68 over palp, pulse is 58, respirations are zero, and SpO2 is 87% on room air with a blood sugar of 126. Now, as static cardiology relies on not only correct identification of the rhythm, but also correct treatment, we need to choose what algorithm in ACLS that we're going to follow. Are we going to follow the stable or the unstable algorithm? Now, for unstable criteria, I use the acronym CHAD. And this, of course, stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration of mental status, and dyspnea. Based on this patient's presenting condition as well as vital signs, my final diagnosis for static cardiology would be an unstable second degree type two. Let's now go over the treatment for this rhythm. Just like with all static cardiology cards, you should begin your treatment by reciting the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV O2 monitor. The next thing I wanna do is ventilate this patient with a BVM because he is apneic. Because this is technically a bradycardic rhythm, I'll consider atropine one milligram IV push. But as the saying goes, unstable gets the cable, this patient will benefit more from electrical therapy. 
I'm going to go ahead and attach pads to the patient's chest and turn on the pacer function on the monitor. I'll then select the rate, and this can be anywhere between 60 and 100 pulses per minute. And then I'll increase the current until I see electrical capture. I'll then check a carotid pulse, and this will be mechanical capture. I could then consider vasopressors to increase cardiac output, blood pressure, and heart rate, and then maybe even consider an advanced airway, considering he's apneic. All right, and that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And don't forget, you can make your own custom playlists using my videos to help you study for your actual National Registry exam. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.